yet he still loved them. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. So what are we talking about? God is still in the business of what? Empowering people financially. Because that's what it is. That's what of this dispensation is going to do. He says, it's going to make men wealthy. Hallelujah. When I was seated here, did not open my eyes. I saw money. And the Lord showed me, do you know banana leaf? And he made me to understand that he's going to release money to men like leaf. But for this to, to, to happen to you, then this kind of heart you must. Go over, search for that message. Take your time and because I can't talk about it here. So it won't affect what I prepared. Hallelujah. But for your own good, take your time, meditate on it. Pray alone, you'll be flat. Because those who God picked, He picked them from their torture and set them on high. So things will naturally happen in their life that they will struggle for. Many of you be- believe in struggle. You believe in business. Child of God, you as a businessman or a businesswoman, since you've been laboring for six years, what do you do? Know? Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Check the people that are controlling the world of riches today. It was not by power. They enter there by grace and faith. All they needed to know is their cost. Please, before I continue my message, let's just worship God with one song. Then pray. Then you sit down. Hallelujah. But please do what I just said. Go back to that message on Wednesday message on how. Meditate on it. And as you meditate, the same power that touched those that were here will touch you in the life. That is why you are called Jehovah.
pits of your enemy tent. Hallelujah. 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 Um, I don't know where to start. I don't know where to start. I just, I wish everyone here is seeing what I'm saying. Yes. I wish everyone here is seeing what I'm saying. It would have prompted a level of seriousness. A level of commitment. That will help you not to miss the flight. Because I'm seeing a plane that is about to fly. Now, I'm not talking about a physical plane. Are you getting me? If you study the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verse 8, the Bible said, Who are these that fly like the clouds and like the bed to their nests? Now, these are human, but the Bible describes them as cloud and bed flying. Because anybody that will be seen in his generation, anybody that will be recognized, anybody that will shine as light, anybody that will be a spectacle must receive wings of God. If there is no wings, you can't fly. The Bible said in Matthew, do men light candles and put it under the bushes? There are many candles that are under the bushes. You as an individual, you are a candle. But until God lights you, you will shine. So when God said in Isaiah, arise and shine, it was because his light came. So all the time there was no light, there was no shining. So it means you can turn up potentials, you can be talented, you can be competent, you can have all the qualification in life to be special and spectacular. But when you lack light, nobody will see you. But when God brings light into your life, then you become an important factor. When you say men talking about a particular person, it is because that person is the last. Nobody talks about a dead man. In other words, if you have no light, you are dead. Please follow your name foundation, taking us away. If you have no light, you are what? Dead. If men should gather and start discussing about a particular person, it is because that person is in the limelight. It is because that person is not hidden. There are people that are doing what you are doing. Nobody talks about them because they are no factor. But when you do things that are not even as pronounced and massive, they talk about you because you are a factor. So that is why when someone who is carrying light makes a mistake, the world will capitalize it and magnify it because it's carrying light. And if you should buy a car or build a house, it becomes a topic because it's carrying light. So until you become the topic, Hallelujah. You are not yet complete. And until you turn a light, you can't be the topic. So I told you that you are a candle as human, but until they light you, you cannot shine. The Bible said in the book of John, chapter 1, it said, It is the light that lights everyone that comes into the world. So it means the day you are pursuing and better into this world, you came as a candle. Who is the light? Light you, you cannot shine. So every man that came into the world that did not allow Jesus, who is the light to light him, came into a world of darkness. And he, he concluded within himself not to shine until he finished his days here on earth. That is why men can come into the world unannounced and die unannounced. They bury them and their legacy will be forgotten. Because these men do not. God to light them. Please pay attention. He is the light that lighted everyone that comes into. There was no exception. So you can't say, "Oh, minus me." So if Jesus does not light me, I 
transition. He said, everyone that cometh into the world, he is the light that lighteth them. So when you go to a lady doctor and you tell him to light you, he's not actually lighting you. What he's doing to you is truncating your life. He's cutting your destiny short. It's light. The light is not true, it's one. So until Jesus likes you, you are wasting your time. If you are a business person and God has not liked you, you will go to the market, shed your roof, nobody will see you. Because there is no light. You can open a ministry, nobody will see you because there is no light. Why? The Bible said in Isaiah chapter 60, he said, darkness shall cover the earth. God's darkness, the people, the world blocks me teach. It's not just darkness, but a thick one. So a world where there is thick darkness, who will see you? So if you must be seen, you must be lighted by God and become a candle that is born. But many of you are under the bush. And yet, you want the world to notice you. You are under the bush in the spirit realm. And you want the world to regard what you do. When you see people doing something and people gather around them, it is because they are born. A man of God was driven from the city into the outskirts of the city. And in that place, men gathered around him. And he did the, 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 the crime of his father as an altar. Since they didn't allow him to, to, to teach in the city anymore, so they banished him away from the city. So he went to the forest and passed. Places that men have deserted and forsaken. He went there and people left the city and started to run. Men will not see light and still remain in darkness. So when they see light, it attracts them. So when they see that light, they can't stay in darkness. So they have to join you together like this. So when they ask him, how come after we chase you out of the city, men still gather around you? He said, all I know is that I set myself on fire and men gather to watch me burn. So until you set yourself on fire for God, but you allow Jesus like you and you begin to burn, no one will gather around you. If you don't put sugar on the ground, ants will gather. So when you see some certain things happening in the life of people, don't get provoked and don't be stirred with the spirit of jealousy. Try to know what they did. Try to know how they acquired that thing. Discover it and pay the price. That is the topic. Of liberty. You are in darkness and you want to be free from darkness. There is a battle in your family that is subverting everyone there and you don't want to be a victim of what they are going through. There is a threat to come out. What wasted your grandfather, wasted your father, and that is the one to waste you. You can escape. Discover. The means to come out. Hallelujah. The cause of what? Freedom. And believe me, you can never be free until there is light. Because darkness is imprisonment. Darkness is bondage. Darkness is captivity. So it means whatever you do in darkness, you do in prison. So it means there is a limitation. There is a boundary, you are within a pub, so you can't come out of that shackle that you are operating from on the light comes. So it is that light that will break that chain off your hand. It is that light that will break the chain off your neck. It is that light that will extend whatever you are doing. So when a man is craving for enlargement, such a man should first of all look for lights. And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Lord, he said, he said I am the light of what? The world. He said the light shines in darkness, and darkness cannot comprehend it. It means darkness cannot understand the mystery of the light. So it means each time you deploy a strategy to enlarge the light, to get promotion, darkness masters it. Darkness understands it. That is why all your efforts was not aborted. That is why all your efforts was frustrated. It's not as if you don't know how to do it. You have not done the pattern and the strategy to make sure that thing you are doing works well. But that's why the effort is it work because darkness understand physical strategies. Because darkness understands the efforts of men. So you can't use what the devil understands for 
he kills the devil. So the only weapon the devil can never understand is light. Is light. Then he said, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear the shadow of what? How does shadow come? Shadow is another word for darkness. And there are three words who are called shadow in the realm of the spirit. They are called shadow. They can appear in your house. When you see them, they are not shadow. And three demons have the ability to separate the spirit of a man from his body. And when you wake up, you discover that a man is dead and you don't know the mystery behind it. The shadow of death visited him. So the only way to scare such spirit is by bringing light into your mind. Because that is the only arsenal or weapon that darkness and not understand. So you say you have only one hope, only one option to survive in this dark and wicked world. And that hope is Jesus. So when you move away from him and try any other means, you are wasting your time. That is why you can stay. One particular thing will be tormenting you. One particular thing will trap you down. You have tried everything. Nothing happened. You have been to churches, nothing happened. You have prayed, nothing happened. You have fasted, nothing happened. Pastors have taken your oil and prayed for you. Nothing happened. Why? They didn't tell you one simple truth. They didn't introduce you to light. They didn't introduce light to you. They didn't initiate you to the world of light. So they took truths that would have paid you from you. And they gave you things that are temporal. That is why God told Jeremiah. He said, go and tell these prophets who profess and lie to my people to stop lying to them. He said, tell these prophets to show them their sin. When they repent from their sin, then they will be healed. But if they continue to tell them peace, peace, when there is no peace, he said, put the prophets and the pastors without you. Hallelujah. So what am I talking about? They didn't show you lights. As you are, I know you. And I know you. I can introduce you to her. Oh, this is my friend. This is my friend. Then I tell you her name, I tell you her name. Now, you guys now know each other. So anytime you now see yourself on the way, you can like greet each other because through me, you got to know each other. That is the duty of every shepherd. To introduce men to Jesus and introduce Jesus to men. So if you are no longer there, that Jesus, they found through you, we stay there. But they refuse to introduce Jesus to you and they were there praying nonsense prayer. This is the issue in the church. That is why you go to church, you see everybody possessed. You see everybody with sickness. I went to a, a, a church, I was invited, and after administration, I said, if you are sick, come out. Almost the whole church came out. They were all diseased and sick. And I was wondering and asking myself, what has this pastor been doing in this church? How come he has brought of sick people in the church? Hallelujah. Because sickness understand darkness. Sorry, darkness understands any amelioration or solution you try to bring outside light. Yes. And sickness is one of the fruits of darkness. Praise the living God. When I say sickness is one of what? The fruits of darkness. The Bible says when Jesus went about preaching, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. He was healing the sick, opening blind eyes. Those who had leprosy, they were clean. Those that were diseased, they were clean. Now all manner of miracles happened there. The Bible said these people stood up and they began to praise God. They said, Thank God who has raised the prophet among us. Now the Bible now said the prophecy of Isaiah was fulfilled in that place. What did the prophet say? He said, Those who sat in darkness saw great light. Those who sat in darkness saw great light. So it means all those people that were afflicted. They were in darkness. That is why they were afflicted. So it was darkness that afflicted them. So the sickness was fruit of the darkness. The leprosy was the fruit of darkness. Their leprosy was the fruit of darkness. So when light came, everything that belongs to darkness left naturally. So this is why we pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. Nothing happens. So when you discover that nothing happens, your faith now dies. So when they call you to come and pray, say, Master darkness. Don't allow darkness master. 
Hallelujah. Amen. What did I say? Master darkness. Don't allow darkness to master you. The cost for freedom. The price for liberty. There is a price. So if somebody should tell you you cannot be free, that person is a joker. If that person should tell you that you cannot be segregated and separated from that thing that is eating you up, is a joke. All you need to know is what the price. What you have to do for you to be what? Free. You must be introduced to light. And that light is what? Jesus. Now let's open your Bible. Just open your Bible. Second Samuel. Second Samuel. Second Samuel. Are you with me? Second Samuel 24. Second Samuel chapter 24. Verse 18. Are you there? I just showed us what the first thing to do is what? To be what? Introduced to light and master darkness. Second Samuel, are you there? Yes. Chapter what? 24, verse 18. And that came that day to David and said unto him, Go up, rear an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Launa, the Jebusite. And David, according to the saying of God, went up as the, as the Lord commanded. Are you with me? And Aaron and looked and saw the king and the servant coming on toward him. And Aaron and went out and bowed himself before the king on his face upon the ground. And Aaron and said, Wherefore is my lord the king come to his servant? And David said, To buy the treasure floor of thee to build an altar unto the Lord, that the plague may be spared from the people. Are you with me? Verse 22 And Aaron and said unto David, let my lord the king take and offer up what seemeth good unto what seemeth good unto in other words the man was telling them to take the land of free no pay behold here be ozzy for both sacrifice and treasure instruments and other instruments of the ozzy for wood all this is did Arana as a king give unto the king and I want to say unto the king, the Lord thy God, I said, thee. Are you seeing that? Yes. But what did David now tell me? Verse 24. And the king said unto Arana, No, which is no, but I will surely buy it of thee as a price. At what? A price. Is it for free? No. Let that we lie, offer both of you unto the Lord my God, of that which do cost me nothing. nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oil for what? 50 shekels of silver. And then we built here an altar unto the Lord, and offered God offering, and peace offering. So the Lord was interested, was interested, entreated, entreated, not interested, was entreated, and the plague was saved from Israel. Now, before I begin to explain what happened here, the, the passage before where we read, the first passage before where we read, the Bible said that there was a sin in the land. Please mark that word sin. So when David committed that sin, there was plague. Plague is just like the way we have COVID-19. Pandemic, epidemic, pestilence, casual spread of disease. Now, this disease was taking life in Israel, killing people like Pharaoh. So the first we got COVID-19 started in the Bible. So before this one happened, it happened to what? In the Bible. So you cannot what cause that COVID-19 by discovering what caused the plague in the Bible, so it was sin. So when this sin came, the Bible said that that person started destroying lives. And then he began to weep and was crying that God should stop the death that was killing the land. And when the angel that brought that issue was about to destroy Jerusalem, which is the city that it was, and was to stretch his hand so that that city would be was destroyed by that plague, the Bible said that the, the Lord told the angel to stop. Are you seeing that now? So what? Stop! Now, every other city and town was destroyed and dilapidated by that pestilence. But when it was the turn of Jerusalem, God said, Stop! That is why I told you that God should stop your grandfather, stop your father, can stop when you know the cause 
for freedom. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Now, God now told David for this thing not to destroy Jerusalem and continue destroying. There is a method he was a plan. What was that method? He said, Go and buy the treasure floor of Arana. Build me an upper bed. And was not in the focus of all. So start the plague and the issues savaging a life and savaging a family. You must understand the importance of an altar. Because when you committed that sin, that sin erected an altar in the name of the spirit. I taught you here how sin can erect a monument in the spirit way. So that altar is really the, the brutality that started destroying the land came from. So if that altar must go down, it must go down by another altar. So how can you be fighting an altar without an altar? How can you be in their valley and be fighting an enemy that is on top of the heat? Hallelujah. It means that enemy has a better chance to prevail and beat you. So for you to reach up, you have to work in rest and not time. When God chose Gideon and helped him by through his angel to discover who he was, that he was a deliverer, not a commoner. Because sin and darkness made Gideon to look as if he was a commoner. And the whole of the Israelites we are suffering. They were under the slavery of the Israelites. They could not do anything. They were helpless. Just like many of you are under the slavery and the oppression of poverty, sickness, and all other of shame and cataclysm. But the Bible said that when this angel came and spoke to Gideon and said, Thou mighty man of value. So through that revelation, Gideon knew that he was not a commoner. Gideon knew that he was not a mediocre. Gideon knew that he was not just an ordinary person. There is something special about his destiny. There is something special about his life. But when this knowledge came, how can Gideon achieve this knowledge? God now spoke to Gideon. He said, Go and destroy the altar of your father and build me an altar. So Gideon went by night with some men and destroyed that altar. And they built God an altar. That was when God now told him, Go now and fight the Midianites and deliver Israel from their hand. So what does it mean? Before you go to save your generation, first of all, save yourself. Destroy the altar that is holding you back. So if that altar is not destroyed, you can't go far by trying to save others. You can be a victim in a place where you are trying to repress others because there is something in your house that is conspiring, that is affiliating, that is working hand to hand with the power in the place you are trying to fight. Hallelujah. I don't know what I'm saying. Have you seen men of God who went out to go and destroy idol or to, to, to do deliverance? In that place, they become casualty. Now then they call it deliverance. Yes. Because there is something in your background that you are not set to do. And you don't have an altar you are standing on. So who gives you step? What authority? The something of us is Satan waiting for you with this. Even that you one more salary cannot stop it. Back to bond, back to bond. Because you are, you are using your efforts on a sticking hand. The Bible says every house that is built on a stone will collapse when the flood and the storm comes. But when it's on top of the rock, it will stand no matter what happens. That is why when that accident took place, the child, nothing happened to the child. That is the storm, that is the flood who came to attack the house. That was to be built in that place. But because it was on what? In solid ground, nothing happened. But there are people who just slight thing. They just push the gap. That's a goji. For pushing someone. So you must be conscious of fear. You must be conscious of stop. Why you set out your agenda? If you have a plan, oh, I want to be great, it's a nice thing to do. But be conscious of confrontation. Be conscious of antagonism. Men who will stand and say it will happen. Men who will stand and say we don't go prosper. Have you not read? Surely they will gather. Have you not read? Why do the head is range and the people imagine a great thing? Have you not read? Let them take counsel. Let them speak their words. 
So every other thing that came here to support the believer is because the believer believes in God and work with God. So those of you who are not working with God and you don't believe in God the way you should believe in God, one leg here, one leg in this door, you are moving around churches looking for stupid miracles. And you don't want to shred your heart. You don't want to sacrifice your heart to God. They will plan and they will prosper. They will gather and they will prevail. They will take counsel and it will stand. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So he said, go and build a rock. Please be conscious of that word. You saw an emphasizing of water. But I don't play with this. Yes, I don't play with I can kill someone if you go there. Praise the living God. Do you know what? Because that is the secret of every man of God that is operating power in the church. If darkness want to prevail against the church, that's the best thing they are back. Once they desecrate that place, you are finished. Like get 10 million people there. You should not be surprised that the 10 million people there are witches and wizards. And you are pastoring witches and wizards. So you that is pastoring witches and what are you? You are the chief of witches and wizards. And you are very sweet as a pastor. There's a man of God. Even the wife was a witch. Never witch. Marry. They were planning against him already to end his life. So he in that population. No one has only eight people in the act. If I get five persons, when no God is more better than having videos that are witches are with her. Now, these witches are with they were only planning to end the pastor's life before God sent a prophet to enter the church. As soon as that prophet entered and the word of God invited him and gave him my kids and he spoke, confession started. Men were like but like paralysis took over them, they were paralyzed, crippled, somewhere mad, death, confession in the church. That was when the pastor knew that even his wife was a witch, he was almost in his life. So, how did witches and wizards gather in your church and they were oppressed and they knew? Because your altar is sick. Your altar is sick. You see churches, you see people entering altar, they are snapping the church. Are you the pastor of the church? Hallelujah. You go to your business place, you snap it. You go to where they snap for Photoshop, you snap it. You see fire has going to be your own, you snap it. Hallelujah. Yes. You snap it. Yes. Tap, snap it. Everything, picture, picture. And if you still carry that bad habit, what the problem? Why does that be dangerous? Did they show in that picture? Hallelujah. It's a sign they belong with you. So it's very wrong. It means you don't have respect and fear for God. The Bible says, come before the Lord with fear and trembling. Fear and when you enter the Lord, the Lord have entered palace and enter the house of a king. When you enter a man's house that you are not familiar with for the first time, how do you enter there? You don't enter any house. No. If the Lord will tell you to die, the first time. Hallelujah. I'm sure this one will be ritualist. We are being careful. Look, you are being careful. That's how you should enter the house of God. That's how you should enter the house of God. Before him, with fear and trembling. You know what is trembling? When you begin to shift. Many of you who are so familiar with church, you misbehave anyhow. That is why there is no power in the church. If you change the holy days, even priest, priest, if priest not holy rich, he enter church, he will die. God will kill that pastor. All that priest will have to tie up on his waist to draw him out. Because if they enter, they will follow. So do you see the kind of glory that was in the church those days? The power that was there? Out of Apostle chapter 4 and to 5, especially 5, that was where the church made two places. And the lawyers and Sapphires entered church. They thought it was protect. They thought it was their palace. And they came to life with a man of God. Many of you, life is your hobby. Like, there is a Jewish you know they had you to like to pass to life. You cannot lie if they switch you. Hallelujah. They lied to a prophet. The prophet told him it's not you. Because the prophet knows he's representing somebody. He's a government worker. And that government is the government of God. So, I'm 
I'm starting to represent. So anything I'm doing here, I'm doing it in the name of God. So if you are talking to me, you are talking to God. And the Bible says, when they finish lying, they died. The wife, the man says that. Later, the wife came again and did likewise and died again. Now, do you see judgment in the church? Where is that power today in the church? Because all parts are disagreement. Satan will attack their altar. Angels don't appear there anymore. Angels are gone over here. I was working with a man of God, and people were putting picture on the altar, picture, picture. You know when they come for prayer, they will put food, prostitutes food, they will put that. They will put cigar on, they will put that. Gas tank, when they do that, they will put that. They will not pray, pray. So you know, I wasn't really conscious of that because it wasn't my ministry. So I was working with him. Nobody would tell I was saying with him. But the Lord came to me and said, "Tell me to tell them to stop putting pictures on the altar. Let them lift it up. Pray for the altar." God will answer. He don't need to put it on the altar. He said, that is very anxious, he said. Now, picture, may God come this to me, say, let's say no human being. But do you want to go to the doctor? He is the altar the pull up beside her. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's not the pull up beside her. So, you don't have to jump. There's no need for here. Hallelujah. There's, there's no need for here. So don't swim. Stand there, pray. God will hear you. As a matter of fact, the angel will come to you. You like stay there, you must stay outside. So don't put your half feet. The angel will assign you. Because you, you must not jump here. Let me ask you a question. Of you who are married, shall you get special corporate to serve your husband? Yes. You feel that's how she does. When you do that, what are you doing? No death here. That's going on. If you lose there, finish, you still can't use there. God wants to. The other side was great. Please pay attention. So, this is very important. For a problem to solve, God said, Go and build your time. And he didn't just say build up how he told me the specific grant we had to build water. So if Jamin had gone to elsewhere, he would be on his own. That is why many of you don't know your altar. The altar that God has obtained for your solution and miracle, you will know that altar because truth is coming from there. And that truth is piercing your wickedness, it's making you uncomfortable. It, it has brought a level of discipline that you cannot condo, so you walk it away. And started looking for another altar. I just wanted to bring it up. There's another church. Let me go elsewhere. Go to a vision in that world. You can go and be exposed to that plague. There was a specific prayer God told us go and put the treasure floor of Anuana. What is the treasure floor? The treasure floor is a farmland, a place where you sow. Hallelujah. What is the vineyard of God? What is the church? If not a vineyard, if not a church in law, we are with so the word of God into the hands of people. Jesus made a parable of a sower who went to go and sow. What was the seed? Was it not the word of God? Hallelujah. There is this, you must understand where God has tied your freedom and rebirth. So if you leave that place, you must understand that everybody has his prophets. When you ignore that person and walk away, oh, I don't need to tolerate that nonsense when it's weak. I don't need to tolerate that nonsense. You can't tolerate the nonsense when you want to connect the blessing. Hallelujah. When you go elsewhere, you will be on your own. You will see people shouting, giving testimony. You don't go reach where you get. You observe me. Go use the end here. So when the angels were coming, it was only really programming the spirit. That these are the numbers of people we are visiting this on it. So next time they will be visiting this group. Hallelujah! You will never be released because they don't know you as member for them. <laughs> now you call yourself member. I'm telling you the gospel truth. They don't know you. A man of God came and took my member by force. Mama knows the man of God. He was on assignment to still member that period. And the man of God, he tried even to 
TV mama. Yes, because I told him her importance, her value. That she's like plenty of people in one person. So to him, ah, if I get this one as women in that, ah, my choice was strong. I thought I was talking to a friend. I didn't know I was talking to a vampire. So he went to about trying to keep them on attack. So he took one. What was already set for rebellion? He was in pattern, and after the partition, God started using him. So when he started seeing the level of miracle, Christ came. So he was in a hurry. He was not ready to submit again and finish his training. So he wanted to go. He was getting praises and commendation for people. So it was a good opportunity for him to leave. So he followed that one. And God told me. I think in the spirit, I saw God telling the man of God. I said, Is that that person you have in your church? If you don't send him into this church, he will last. Because in the spirit of the he God is supposed to be there. It's a mistake. So there are people that we attract God, they will bring it to you. If you have God, then you will die. That is why I don't crave for numbers. I go for members. I know your body, you don't know your body. If they should cut your hand, for example, and they say they want to put your hand back, if they are bring my own, you don't go fear and identify this one will be your own. You should be able to know your sheep. That is not when Jesus saw multitudes, he filtered them. He said, It is not all of you that my father has given power to follow me. All of them turned away and walked away. It was just the twelve that were standing. And Jesus said, Will you also go? He said, No. He said, For so whom shall we go to? For so thou hast the worth of eternal life. So it means they knew his voice. That is why he said, I know my sheep, and my sheep knows my voice. So they were after the world of Jesus. Because that was what the Father sent him to go and do. But all that were there for miracles, for healing, to tap something and use it. So he did tap them with his own words. So that is why a man of God can begin to teach, and his message sounds rude. Some people get offended. I said, to them, they don't like to do this, do this, do that, and they walk away. Say John. Hallelujah. That's the gospel truth. You are not his member. If you are his member, you will tolerate your face. Elisha was offended by Elisha. Do you know what it means to leave your father, leave your mother, leave everybody and follow a prophet? When they dropped the mantle, he said, Let me kiss my mother, my father, and goodbye. After the goodbye, we follow you. He did it and followed. So after all the time of study, Want to go to heaven and you cannot even say, Son, what do you want me to do for you? You not told him you return back. God is taking me. Does it make sense? So you don't do well, well for free. No, after 12 years of boy boy, you don't want to say to me, okay? Is there no for that guy to be angry? But he wasn't angry. He said, As the Lord lives, as my soul lives, and the Lord lives. Did you hear that word? Angels wrote his back. God no tennis. That was the fourth test he passed. When they come to another room again, Elijah did the same thing. Return! For God to say this. He repeated the same word. As the Lord given, as my soul given, I will not leave him. Until they come to the third land, where he was to pass with Jordan. And he told him again, What do you want? No, so before the first time, go. And the guy repeated the same thing that he would leave him. So when they now crossed the river, he just said, What do you want me to do for you before God take me? Why did he not ask him that in the initial time? Because he was testing him. Sometimes a man of God's offense is a test. Sometimes a man of God may not be willing to offend you, but the Spirit of God will enter him and use him to offend you because he wants to test you. These people are vessels. God can be just like a gate. If I open gate, I don't go enter. You, it is not you. You know your door is closed. It's closed. I mean, your spirit man is closed. But a prophet, his spirit man is open. Hallelujah. His spirit man is what? Open. So angel can enter. Angel can enter and talk. What he does can enter and, and you think it's the man that is still talking. I don't know. He's no longer here. I know what I'm talking about. Sometimes I will finish talking to people. Sometimes in prophecies, they will begin to tell me this is what you say. It has come to pass. I will say, wait, what are they talking They will remind me for this teaching. I don't remember anything. I know I didn't say anything to the best of my knowledge. But they are forcing me telling me you talk. I want to go and ask and ask and ask. Let's go to the Bible. Let's have a talk. I don't want to accept that. Who was talking to them? It wasn't me. It's 
spirit entered and spoke and left. So when you see them behaving, or you say, oh, this small girl, this small boy, why go talk to me? I can't talk to you. So that time he asked him. And the Bible said, after he asked, he said, he said, give me the double portion of your anointing. It means that man knew what he was looking for. Many of them are not always what they look for. You don't know why you came to church. You just came to church because people came to church. The man has a focus. What I'm looking for is double portion. If a child wants his two miracles, I will not get the two miracles. That was his focus. So when he was in office, he paid blind eyes to office. Then he to office. He was seeing double portion. Double portion. That was all he was seeing. Double portion. Now, when thing you may lose, you will resemble. If you look at your face, you will become an face. He had a focus. And the God has said, okay, this thing when they ask is difficult. Though. But if you see me go, you will what? Know that God has granted it. So it means not be me go give you. Now God, let go give you. That's why Jesus said, Behold, I come quickly with a reward. To give every man according as his work shall be. So all those times that Elisha was following Elijah, the Lord was noticing his down. So when Elisha passed the exam, the Lord came and rewarded him and gave him the double portion of the anointing. He saw him be taken and he said, My father, my father, the child of Israel, the host made thereof. And he gave their mantle. When he returned back, that same river Jordan that Elijah passed, he struck their mantle there and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And the river passed. So when the sons of the prophet saw him, who mocked at him before? Who said, you know that God is taking your master, Elijah, today? He said, I know, what's your peace? So, there was discouragement coming from outside, yet he didn't stop. There are many of you that some backbiting and some rubbish that is coming from your neighbor against your prophet, against the church you are attending, is already discouraging you. And you walk away from a place where God has come at you. When your enemies want to terminate you and they know that the umbrella you are under can save you from their house, what they do is to disconnect you from that umbrella. So if they expose, when you have want to carry chick, the home will be going for it. What is for what the chick will be back from the mother head? So, and catch up. Hallelujah. When they saw that miracle, all of them gathered their self and came and bowed. They said, Surely. The spirit of Elijah is upon Elisha. So come and listen because of that. The Bible said, Well, then we came, we read that this man brought everything. And the man said, Take it for free. Take it for what? Take it for what? He said, We take it for free. The Bible said, Then he said, I will not take this man for free. And we pay price for this. Then we let over to what are you doing? And when they left, he said, don't take money, you don't carry extra back. For the one man is worthy of what? His needs. It, no, I give you for free, I don't collect anything. How will they chop? Yes, you see the devil say, I will chop. I don't know if you are collecting. I told you what I'm Don't carry money, don't carry back. And don't charge people. For you will chop. How? Hallelujah. And when they left and said, back, do you know Jesus said, do you lack like anything? They said no. Do you know what they said no? How? Because why they were teaching for free, God was speaking to those people in their hearts to return. When God speaks to you, you don't say that. Because many of you, when you hear the voice of God in your heart, you can't stop it. Say, I don't like this voice. I have to stay. 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 Hallelujah. You can the voice. I don't know. I'm going to see my account. I don't even want to live on my body. The other side, you can't believe God. That which comes in God. It's not a good thing to learn from you. So that is why when your pastors discover that you people are seeking, they look for another way to survive by monetizing you. They will turn out to a monetary is because the first thing is to bring water. This water is 5,000. Then the second thing is to bring oil. 7,000 naira. This sticker, five partners, so the, the church now comes to the first grant. Who put the past of into industry? So, those of us that know what we are doing, even when such things happen, we still hold on to God. Because we know the people that we are doing, not the So, you can pastor 50,000 people, God use you to help all of them. 
and no one will be behind. God can bring a man from Abuja. Are you getting me now? He will just dream. Go to a those states. If you give the name of that servant to that man, he will try that game. Until he seems to be with rest. And what is giving you that millions of naira is to what? Wash it. Because God told him about you before he came. Then all of a sudden you see that that man of God becomes a leader. And all of a sudden you see him helping people, even members. And you begin to ask, where it was he going in? Where did he get to? Now free. So all those things that the man prophetic Jonah was doing, now how free, even they do all those things. Where did the money come from? These are men who look unto God for rewards. So what I'm trying to say is that even when the member fails, as a man of God, maintain your integrity. Because the devil can manipulate your members against you so that you will lose your false purpose. For you as a member, don't let Satan use you. Don't let Satan use you for your pastor. Because if the pastor should fall before alone, stand up on your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up your right hand. Say, Holy Spirit of God, change my heart. Change my heart. Give me a good heart. A heart that can walk with you. A heart that can please you. A heart that can please you. Put a word of prayer. Just guys, that night, you just see your body. 